Hey everyone, this is Fabrio and welcome back. Today I'm going to do a video response to my good buddy RPG uh, Fantast and originally to the game Grinder, and it's about the games that left an impact on me. So I think this is a very interesting topic. I just needed some time to think about uh, said games, and for this reason I'm going to follow uh, the game grinder and doing a list of the 12 games that left an impact on me plus one and you'll understand the plus one at the end <laughs> and I simply try to organize this list as in order to avoid being simply uh, a list of my favorite games basically so let's just start it since 12 game uh, there's a lot to talk about it the only thing is that as you know from my videos I cannot show you all games since my all my old systems are not here with me in London, but um, I'll do my best, like always. So um, this is probably the first one. It's the most recent game, and simply because I haven't played when it was released, but a couple of years later, and that is the first Mass Effect. Um, while it's not my favorite of the series, uh, if I have to be honest, it's actually my least favorite of the Mass Effects, but I still love it, of course. Um, it's simply a matter that I prefer certain things in Mass Effect 2 and 3. But the first Mass Effect had a massive impact on me mainly because, of course, number one, it was the first in this trilogy, in the trilogy. And it introduced me to this uh, massive universe. And um, it was also one of the first uh, proper, like, third person cover based shooter that I played, a, a type of genre that at the time was quite new for me since um, I didn't own immediately a PS3 or a 360 so I think that that genre was made big by Gears of Wars, those kind of things but Mass Effect, especially uh, since I love science fiction um, having a, such a game uh, with so much free freedom especially in the interaction with the other characters was something that blew me away and, it's, I, and I absolutely loved it Thinking about um, how much you can interact with certain characters or your crew members, that you can have a relationship with them. It was something incredible because I remember Bioware from earlier games and they always have this distinction of making deep characters, um, interaction between characters such as like when I play Baldur's Gate or the Knights of the Old Republic. But Mass Effect really brought it to a brand new level, I think, uh, and it was fantastic. A lot of fun, absolutely one of the most memorable trilogy uh, that I've played in recent years, without a doubt. And it all started with the first one, and that's what I want to acknowledge. Even though, probably in the grand scheme of things, Mass Effect 2 is my favorite, but fantastic stuff. The next one is probably, I would say, the most... Uh, impactful game that I ever played <laughs> simply because it solidified my love for my favorite genre and which is of course JRPGs and the game in question is Breath of Fire 3. Breath of Fire, I talk about that series every now and then of course uh, it's my favorite, personal favorite JRPG series of all time and the third installment was just perfect there's a lot of discussion, like what is, is there a perfect game, what's the perfect game. To me, Breath of Fire 3 was absolute perfection. Um, it had everything I wanted at the time. Because before the PlayStation 1, uh, I didn't really play RPGs, with some exceptions. Mainly because on the Super Nintendo in Europe at the time, uh, we didn't have RPGs. They were just simply not importing them. And, and translating and all of that. So we really started with the PlayStation. And Breath of Fire 3, it's one of the first RPGs that I played. And it was as mind-blowing. But also because uh, it introduced me to concepts such as like deep and intense storytelling that I play RPG, some RPGs before it and at least for me at the time, there was nothing like that. It was like deep story, deep characters, highly like interaction between them. But then also like seeing the, the colorful and gorgeous graphics, um, a great music, but 
uh, unforgettable characters. All these things together made me fell completely in love with uh, JRPGs. And from that moment, I basically swore to myself, like, I have to play as many RPGs that I can. And the rest is history. Since at this moment, it's still my favorite genre. Uh, I love playing RPGs. I can get enough of them. And it all, mainly it all started thanks to Breath of Fire 3, and it's something I will never forget. And I'm so pissed off at Capcom, the way they treated this series over the years, that it's... Ugh. But Breath of Fire 3, uh, to me, it's the most, probably the most impactful game ever, actually. Next, we're moving to the... we're moving back, actually, to the NES. We're going backwards here. Um, as you can see, I made my list completely randomly. <laughs> And uh, talking about another big time impact, uh, it's the first Castlevania. As well, again, this is not my favorite of the series. I still love it, of course, and there's a ton of nostalgia. Um, this is the game that introduced me to the Castlevania series, and it's also one of the first games I played on the NES. Even though I never owned it physically, uh, I played at a friend's house during a birthday party when I was very young. And there was this group of us set, set around the television, and all of them were like uh, older than me because it's a, a, a party of a good friend of my brother. And I was kind of the outsider there because I was quite younger. But still, they allowed me to come, to play with them, to chat with them, and it was a lot of fun. But especially, I fell in love with this style of gameplay, like the side scrolling action games, that still to this day it's one of my favorites. I just love that kind of games, and it's no wonder that I will always prefer this style over the Metroidvania ones, but simply mainly because of nostalgia, but also because I think it, it made, it, it, it's something that makes the games really challenging, because with the Metroidvania you just have to level up, basically, to, uh, like to um, surpass certain challenges and stuff like that. While in the old school games, you don't rely on tricks, basically. It's just you and your skills, and that's I, it's something that I love. Uh, it can be brutal. Uh, it took me like more than 20 years to finish the first Castlevania, but at the end I did it. And the horror-themed, the, the music in the Castlevania games, I mean, it's something that stayed with me for my life, and it's no wonder that the Castlevania series is absolutely one of my favorites of all time. I love it. And again... I'm so sad that the way Konami is, it's it, it left the Castlevania series as a big question mark. I mean, to me, that's the real tragedy. Even more than Suikoden and Metal Gear, it's because of Castlevania. Luckily, or unluckily, I still have to play the two Lords of Shadows, so we'll see about that. And the 3DS game, so I still have some Castlevanias, but after that it's done. But we'll see, and it's, it's definitely a big time very important series to me, and it all starts at the beginning with the first one on the NES. Next, uh, we have a game that I don't usually talk about, but it it's one that I really like, and um, definitely I played this as a kid and it shocked me. Um, I usually don't talk about first-person shooters, but how can I not mention Wolfenstein 3D? Because from on a personal level, I always loved history since I was a kid. And even though now my field of expertise is ancient history, especially as a kid, I loved the world wars. I mean, I loved study about them, doing uh, reading about them, everything. I love movies set in the two world wars. And of course, the whole thing with the Nazis was so fascinating in its tragedy, of course. And to see a video game, at the time, it was, as you know, I was very, very young, to see a game such as Wolfenstein was unbelievable. And the, the image of that sort of Hitler Terminator at the end of the game uh, <laughs> was like, when you face that, I was like, <gasps> I was like this. And when you destroy that, it's something that stick with you for your entire life. But it's such a great game. And the incredible thing, just like Doom and those early uh, id software games, it's they, it, the incredible thing is that they still hold up very well. I recently, like a year ago or something, 
uh, by uh, I recently bought uh, Wolfenstein 3D on Steam, and it played wonderfully. It's still a fun, incredibly fun game, and it started. I mean, I like this kind of first-person shooters, like the more unrealistic ones, like the id software games such as Wolfenstein, uh, Doom, of course, Quake. Uh, other companies like such as Unreal, those kind of stuff. I love those first-person shooters where I cannot care less about the more realistic ones such as Call of Duty, Battlefield. I'm nothing against them. I'm simply not very interested in that because I've, uh, <laughs> if I want to be a soldier, I would enlist in the army and I have zero interest in that, but I cannot go in around and shoot Nazis uh, or zombie Nazis or mecha Hitlers or demons and stuff like that. So... But uh, while Doom is probably the most influential in the long run, Wolfenstein is basically the blueprint for Doom. I mean, it started everything that Doom perfected, we might say. It's such an important game. But other than that, it was such a fun game for me when I played it. The, I, I love the setting. And it's no wonder that Wolfenstein, to this day, it's still my favorite first-person shooter series, even more than Doom. And it started with this game and play more recent games. Since Return to Castle Wolfenstein, I love that. Uh, the, the one on PS3, I love that. And oh my god, the New Order. Um, it was simply unbelievable. I still need to pick up the Old Blood though. But definitely Wolfenstein, a, mind, a, a, a very fundamental series for me. Next, it's probably one of the most impactful games on the PS1 era to me. And after Breath of Fire 3, as I said, I was obsessed with the RPGs. I just couldn't get enough. I was completely an addict to those things. And probably the most memorable after the Breath of Fires, because I also played Breath of Fire 4 in the meanwhile, or it was after this, I don't remember, but there was Breath of Fire 3 and 4 on PS1. But the most memorable after the Breath of Fires, of course, without a doubt, Legend of Dragoon. Oh my god, this game. <laughs> this is probably the biggest RPG for me on the PlayStation 1. While Breath of Fire were uh, 3 and 4 were on a class of their own, um, Legend of Dragoon, it's just under there. I mean, it's almost as perfect as them to me. I know this game has a lot of like uh, people who love them and people who's like kind of indifferent towards, but I think it's one of the most epic RPGs on the PlayStation 1 by far. I mean, if Breath of Fire, like, solidified my love for RPGs and made me an addict, I mean, Legend of Dragoon showed me what RPGs could, like, what they can do in terms of, like, storytelling, character development, this big and rich world where you can, like, get invested into. Because it, it, already in Breath of Fire was like that, but Legend of Dragoon, I mean, I remember... I was so obsessed with this game, this huge world with its rich history, religion, mythology, all of that was very influential in the overall story. And these characters, they always they still stick with me as some of the best. I mean, Rose, it's still one of my favorite characters of all time. And that's her story was so tragic and interesting in the way she progressively opens up with uh, the, uh, the other members of the party. The ending of the game was so amazing. A phenomenal soundtrack, a great combat system, and I can go on forever with that game. It's simply so monumental for me. And while most people will talk about the Final Fantasies on PlayStation 1, and for the most part I can see why they're very good, especially 9, by far the best, but Legend of Dragoon is like X times better for me than Final Fantasy was just incredible, and it it really it <laughs> it really sh not I don't want to say again solidify my love for RPGs, but made me realize that I chose the right genre to fell madly in love with because I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed that game. Play for more than a hundred hours easily. Uh, I I was obsessed with the combat system. Um, with those characters, that story, to the point like it was the only game that made me skip school with a friend, but we failed miserably. Uh, <laughs> and I was so obsessed that I started to write, since I love also writing as a hobby, 
I started to, to write the story for Legend of Dragoon 2 and for a prequel on my own, and it went pretty far. It was okay, I would say, but I was so sad because I say, okay, we're waiting for the sequel because they kind of mention it at one point, but of course, as we all know, Legend of Dragoon 2 will never happen, and Sony, they're just a bunch of fucking morons for abandoning that series, since it could have been Sony's Final Fantasy, in my opinion. They could have done sequels, prequels, spin-offs. Could have been huge, but they just abandoned it like idiots. And but definitely one of the most important and monumental games of my um, teenage years, since I played this with you in my high school years, and it's unforgettable memories. Next, talking about um, legendary games and impactful one, how can I not mention Resident Evil 2? Since uh, before that I saw, but I didn't own Resident Evil 1, uh, but the, the, the amount of anticipation for this game was almost like at feverish levels. It was insane how much I wanted to play this game. And also the fact that you hear, you, you heard about it in the news and television, something unheard of. I mean, in Italy, during what was like the late 90s, or maybe early 2000s, no, it was late 90s, I think. To talk, hearing the news talking about a video game because they were planning on banning it because of its violence. So you have to rush to the stores in order to get it before it was too late. It, it was incredible. And... Um, <laughs> but I remember playing it for the first time. I was like uh, to a very good friend of mine's place in the mountains, since uh, where I'm from, it's very close to the Alps. So it's, it was normal for us going there to skiing and stuff like that. And we're a lot of friends there. And with his friend, we started to play Resident Evil 2 and we were just blown away because I love the first one. It's really good. I love the atmosphere. It's the only Resident Evil that I think it's kind of creepy, because these games they don't scare me. Uh, but um, and also because I love the claustrophobic aspects of being in the mansion and all that good stuff. But I think everything that was great about Resident Evil One was improved many times by Resident Evil Two. I mean, the amazing voice acting in both games. I love. I love the bad voice acting of the PS One. Um, the music, uh, the I still remember playing the demo of Resident Evil 2 on PC, nonetheless, not even on PlayStation. That I think you can play for like 10 minutes or something, but it just gave me an idea of, um, I was like, oh my god, I need this game. And I think it's the best survival horror ever made, still to this day. Uh, and it's the peak of the golden age of the genre that was during the PlayStation 1, I think. I mean, there's been great survival horror since, but between Resident Evil 2 and then Dino Crisis, I mean, that's... nothing can top those games. But Resident Evil 2, uh, legendary. There's nothing else I can say. Uh, next, it's a very unusual game that I, I don't think I ever mentioned it, but it's unbelievable how much I liked it, because I was thinking about it recently, and that is Fear Effect. Talking about one of my favorite, this is one of my favorite games on the PlayStation 1, and it's completely like uh, maybe surprising since, as I said, I never mentioned it, but uh, absolutely one of my favorite games on that system. Just, it was such, I think that the PlayStation 1 was going a lot for the, those cinematic experiences, like from Final Fantasy, the Parasite, Parasite Eve, and then this. Uh, Fear Effect was just so cinematic, but also it combined a lot of elements from games that I love, such like Resident Evil. It just controlled like one. It was it had tank controls, but it was a bit fluider. Uh, it had like sort of uh, creepy moments or more tense moments. Uh, a very mature story, at least for the time. I think it, that was one of the things I remember being quite a mature game. For its time, I mean, looking at now, people are just like, uh, the fuck is this shit? Because, like, it's weird graphics, which is a sort of trademark of the series. I cannot imagine Fear Effect with the different graphics. Uh, but again, like, there was some swearing here and there. There is the famous towel scene, so with some nudity, but it was very innocent in a way. So, yeah, we were for a very innocent time compared to games today. 
but for the back then, it was unheard of games doing stuff like this. As nudity is, of course, something much, much more controversial than violence in gaming, of course. But Fear Effect had a great story, unforgettable characters. I will never forget this three misfits of Hannah, Glass, and Deke. <laughs> it's a fantastic trio of mercenaries. And I was just obs I was obsessed with this game. Um, it, it's one of my favorite action games still to this day. I love the sequel, even though it was much harder than the already very tough original one. I still need to finish Fear Effect 2. But it left a big impact on me, and still to this day, I was desperate when the third one was cancelled on the PS2. But apparently there are rumors of a new Fear Effect game, game coming, like, uh, thanks to Kickstarter, so we'll see what happened. But the first game was really... Uh, Exactly probably what I wanted at that time and it was a combination of various genre like this cinematic experience with similar Resident Evil style of gameplay uh, Great voice acting race characters an interesting weird story mm, Very very cool game um, Next we're moving to the original Xbox a console that I don't usually talk about it too much uh, but it definitely offered us some memorable games, and this is definitely um, one of the best that it can offer, and it absolutely had a massive impact on me. And it's, of course, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the original, much better than the sequel. Even though the sequel is interesting, the original it's where it's at. I mean, easily the best game in the whole Star Wars franchise. Uh, my favorite uh, Western RPG, because it's Star Wars mainly, because uh, people would say, oh, Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, uh, or something like that, which are great games, of course, don't misunderstand me, so I played those, but uh, if you add Star Wars, that's a huge plus in my books, since I absolutely love Star Wars. And to have a sort of RPG-ish, well, ish, an RPG adventure in this universe, it's, a, it's an original story, I couldn't stop playing that game. I finished it, I think, like three times in a row. I couldn't stop playing. And I was so obsessed with the game that at one point I wanted, basically, Knights of the Old Republic being the story for the next Star Wars movies. One of the reasons why I wasn't that exciting with the project they were doing for episodes 7, 8, and 9 was like, no, do something different. Follow this. You have an amazing story with Knights of the Old Republic. Just do that in a movie. It would be perfect. But, <clears throat> I mean, I like the new movies, of course. They're amazing. Episode 7 and uh, Rogue One, and I cannot wait for uh, the new one this year. But... To have a Star Wars RPG was just unbelievable for me. And it offered like unforgettable moments with unforgettable characters. I mean, to the point that Bastila is actually one of my favorite Star Wars characters from the whole Star Wars universe. Only after the Obi-Wan. That's how much I love this game. And as I said, easily one of the best games on the original Xbox. Together with other games such like Panzer Dragoon Orta, the two Halos. With these games, I was like, okay, it was worth getting an Xbox. Um, <clears throat> next, we're going to do a big jump backwards, and we're talking about the first Legend of Zelda. I have to mention this game, simply because while it's not my favorite in this Legendary series, um, <clears throat> it was so uh, incredible at the time, as this is still one of the best old-school adventure games you can... Because, it, as I said... Actually, it, this was more than a game at the time. It was a real adventure. It was like you were exploring this vast world as Link and uh, going into the dungeons, uh, collecting clues and all of this. And it was so awesome that as a kid, basically, once I put down the controller, I, go out, I went outside in the gardens and the woods to play basically Zelda. I drove my, uh, my own maps, uh, imagine where to find caves and something. Um, with my wooden sword and go around imagining that the woods beside, behind my house were 
basically a high rule and stuff like that. That was how awesome that game was. And also at the time seeing the gold cartridge to have such an amazing soundtrack. I mean, it was a very, very influential game for me as a kid in my mind. Allow my imagination to run wild, to live in great adventures. Remember, like, together with Goonies, I mean, Zelda and Goonies really want, really pushed me to go adventuring, yeah, in the hills of northern Italy, yeah. <laughs> Finding caves or pirate ships in the woods of northern Italy, yep. Uh, it's amazing, amazing game. I don't need to talk about Zelda, of course, but as I said, well, it's not my favorite. It's... It started it all, of course, so you, you, you have to give recognition for that. Next, we're moving to another game that um, I haven't talked about it too much, but boy, it was impactful on me, and that is Parasite Eve 2, simply because it's the first of the series that I played. To this day, I'll say the first one is the best, but 2 was a well-worthy sequel, in my opinion. Fantastic game. And basically, this was my dream game at the time. You have a survival horror uh, that controls like Resident Evil with RPG, heavy RPG elements merged into one. You have the perfect game, basically. And this is all I wanted, a survival horror RPG with like all those elements and an interesting combat system and a phenomenal soundtrack weird settings like for example I love Dryfield even though people say oh it's too bright for a horrorish game I don't care I loved it. it was so weird and spooky in its own way a great character like Arya Brea and that game basically made me obsessed with the Parasite Eve franchise like since then I played the other games I've read the book since this whole thing it's started as a book which is really good, actually. If you haven't read Parasite Eve, give it a shot. It's a it's a good uh, science horrorish book uh, by a Japanese author. So I got it over there. Uh, there's also a movie, which is surprisingly not as bad as I feared. It's actually pretty good, um, but it's it's such a tragedy. We'll never see another Parasite Eve since, of course, Third Birthday was not well received. Even though I think it's a a pretty okay game. It's the weakest of the trilogy, yes, but it's not bad at all, I think. It has very interesting ideas, actually. But I would shit my pants if Square will announce a Parse at E4 at E3, since we're in that period, but I know it's not gonna happen. If it's not Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts, why waste money on it? And the fact that it's a book, it's what basically uh, complicated things for Parasite Eve since Square lost the rights to the title and the plot elements of Parasite Eve. That's why Third Birthday is quite different. But uh, I absolutely love this game. I played it so much. I loved it. And as I said, basically it's a combination of my fairy genre. How, how couldn't love... I, it was impossible for me not loving it. And... Since then, I still want to see more games like this, and they're very, very rare, actually, this combination of pure survival horror and pure RPG elements, because now having RPG-ish elements in games, it's pretty, they're a norm, just like leveling up weapons and stats or stuff like that, but a real RPG experience into a very different genre, and especially survival horror, it's, it's kind of rare, actually. Next, we're moving to a more recent one, we're almost done, and that game is Trails in the Sky First Chapter. Um, simply because this game um, came out right when I needed, because I wanted a big, amazing RPGs. After I moved here to the UK, more, most of, uh, like, basically all my gaming system were in Italy, since, uh, and I only had with me my DS with a bunch of games. And of course I wanted and I needed more. So I wanted to go 3DS or PSP. But at that point, uh, of course when you decide to make these long videos, someone calls you. So where was I? Um, I think I was talking about Trace in the Sky, first chapter. And while, again, like in many cases, while it's not my favorite in the series, it's still a fantastic game. 
Like it showed, I think, what a portable RPG was capable of with this deep storyline, amazing interaction between unforgettable characters. And also it started my insane love for the Legend of Heroes series, which at this moment it's my favorite RPG series beside Breath of Fire. So it definitely left an impact in the long run, even though it's a kind of a recent game. But it was, it came out right at the time when RPGs were in a weird situation, I think, when there's the, the whole argument of like JRPGs were on decline, apparently, no RPGs on consoles. And I cannot recommend enough to check Majora's T's video on JRPGs here in the West, as it's, a, it's such an interesting topic, but I think that, especially more recently, in the, this last couple of years, due to and thanks to um, handled RPGs, the genre is it's, it's very strong. Maybe it's a bit different from what it was back in the day during the golden age on the PS1 and PS2, but RPGs, JRPGs aren't going anywhere especially since we have games such as Tress in the Sky, Tress of Cold Steel, all that amazing stuff. Definitely one of my favorite series now. And finally, 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 12th game, uh, I have to mention Fantasy Star 2. For the simple reason, this is the first proper JRPG that I play and the one that started it all. Um, at that moment, I haven't played many RPGs like video games, uh, I was very interested in the concept of the role-playing games, but the only experience that I had at that point was with Ultima 6, and I friggin' hated it, I thought it was horrible. And to think that from a negative experience, I would, at this point, I can say that RPGs are my favorite games, it's pretty amazing actually, and it's all thanks to Fantasy Star 2. Um, it introduced a different style of um, gameplay that I prefer very much. The science fiction uh, setting, of course, helped. But soon after that, I played some like more fantasy style um, RPGs. <coughs> mm, the voice. But overall, I say the, I have to mention this. Even though I didn't own it, I still don't because I, I don't own a Genesis. But a good friend of mine had it. And um, we played together and we were amazed by this game. It was just fantastic. Finally, here we are with a plus one. I'm going to imitate um, Game Grinder and mention a game that had a long-lasting negative impact. I mean, I played this game, I didn't like it, and still to this day I despised it. Uh, I despise the series it's from, uh, the genre and all of that. And that is Grand Theft Auto 3. Play this game, and it's not that I just play that. I, I play Grand Theft Auto since the beginning. Grand Theft Auto 1, the London expansion, Grand Theft Auto 2, 3, its first expansion, and after that, I had enough with Grand Theft Auto. I just don't care for these games. I don't like the genre. I f mainly because I found them really boring. Because you play, after five minutes, you start going around killing people randomly or stealing cars, and that's it. So, I don't understand why people like this game so much, even though they're probably some of the most popular games in the history of humanity, but not for me. It's probably my least favorite series, actually. <laughs> so that's it. Now that I have all the hate for the ending of the video, these are my 12 games that left a positive impact on me in the very long run, uh, and also one game that left a negative impact. So. I cannot recommend guys enough to watch uh, RPG Fantast and uh, Game Grinder videos. Very interesting and very interesting concept for uh, discussion. So give it a watch and definitely let me know in the comments or do further video responses what are some of your most uh, games that had the biggest impact. I've been very curious to hear. So that's all for me. Um, thanks so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time and take care.